Hey, Jay Carper here from American Torah. Today, I'm going to read and talk about one of everyone's favorite, most comforting passages in the Bible. That's sarcasm. All right. Um, Matthew chapter 12, verses 31 and 32. Therefore, I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. There is a sin that cannot be forgiven. That's a pretty big deal. I think everybody who has read this verse or heard about it has wondered, have I done this? Have I done the thing that God can't forgive? Well, honestly, I think if you're asking yourself that question and you're seriously asking and you're worried about it, then you probably haven't committed that sin. But I think it is really important to understand what it is. It's not, it's not something you can do casually, but it is, I'm afraid, something that a lot of people are guilty of. And it's one of the things that is going to cause God's judgment to come down hard one of these days. It is inevitable. Um, so first, let's define, let's define the, the term blasphemy. It's not as complicated as you might think. Essentially, it just means slander or speaking against something. Um, it's not some highfalutin religious principle. Um, it, it's not a, an esoteric doctrine that you have to go to a priest to understand. It just means speaking against something. Anybody can be blasphemed against. You can blaspheme your neighbor by telling lies about him or by speaking against him in public. Um, there's actually a parallelism in these verses that spells out what it means right here. So it starts out saying, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men. That's in verse one. The second verse says, anyone who speaks a word against the son of man, it will be forgiven him. Those two statements are parallel. Back to verse 31, it says, But the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven men. And in verse 32, it says, Whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him. And those two statements are parallel. So essentially, the, the text defines itself. Blasphemy is speaking a word against. And I'm sure it goes beyond speaking a word against. Um, saying that, uh, teaching other people to speak against, or uh, encouraging thoughts in your own mind against something. That's blasphemy in your heart, at the very least. So, at the, at the first part it says, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men. We've defined blasphemy, so let's define sin. Um, 1 John 3, 4, it's a verse that if you're familiar with that one, you're familiar with this verse too. Uh, let me find it. First John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. Or in the King James Version, um, sin is, uh, what does it say? Sin is transgression of the law, I think. Uh, and the law here is... The Greek word behind this phrase is anomia. Uh, it means no law or against the law. Um, and really the term lawlessness is a pretty good definition. But it's not talking about just any law. Um, it's not talking about the law of Rome or of Jerusalem or even your church doctrines. It's talking about the law of God, also known as Torah in the law of Moses. This is the law of God. So sin is violation of the commandments of God as given in the Bible. Um, this passage in Matthew essentially talks about three levels of sin or blasphemy. The first one is sin against Torah, you know, blasphemy against Torah, speaking against keeping God's law or teaching other people not to keep God's law. And Yeshua talked about this in Matthew chapter 5 when he said that those who keep the law and teach others to keep it will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. But those who don't keep the law and teach others not to keep the law will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. 
But note they're still in the kingdom of heaven. It's not a fatal sin to misunderstand and teach erroneously that people aren't supposed to keep God's law anymore. Now, if you rebel and say, I don't care, I'm not keeping that law, that's another story. I'm just talking about people who are mistaken in their theology. Uh, the next level is blasphemy against the Son. And it says, strangely, that this will be forgiven. Um, you know, the scripture says that if you deny Yeshua, he will deny you before the Father. So how is it that blasphemy against the Son is forgivable? Well, it's because you can repent of it. You can say, I'm sorry for that. And you can stop denying him. You can proclaim his name in public and give him glory. You can talk about him. You can say good things about him. That's repenting from blasphemy against the Son. And you can be forgiven that. Um, some of the things that people do to blaspheme him, um, they'll curse his name, they'll deny his teachings, um, they'll deny that he's the Messiah. Um, Judaism is guilty of blasphemy against the Son because they deny that he is the Messiah. Uh, people who deny that he ever existed, I mean, as absurd as that is based on the historical record, some people still say that. And of course, the Gnostics, I don't know if you've heard of them, but they used to teach that um, he only came as an emanation, sort of a spirit being, and he wasn't really there in the flesh. But all of those things are blasphemies against the Son. They're all essentially mistakes of belief. People who misunderstand what has really happened, who have believed a lie, perhaps, about Yeshua, believed all the crazy doctrines that the Christian church sometimes teaches about him, like he did away with the law. Um, in fact, large portions of the Christian church have completely thrown out Moses and said, Christians don't need to read that, they don't need to think about it, have no obligation to follow any of God's commands. But even then, most of those people still acknowledge that Yeshua, they may call him Jesus, it's the same guy no matter how you pronounce the name. They, may, they acknowledge that he is the Messiah, that he came in the flesh, that he's the Son of God. And because of that, they can learn the principles that Yeshua taught and they end up keeping the law of Moses, even if they don't know that that's what they're doing. Um, of course, they have misunderstandings about what it means. They don't get it. They don't keep it correctly the way that God said, but they're understanding the principles behind it. And that's, that's not nothing. That's a big deal. Uh, finally, the third level of blasphemy here is blasphemy against the Spirit. Now, I have heard people say that this means attributing the works of the Holy Spirit to Satan. So if somebody is speaking in tongues and they say that this is God, the Holy Spirit speaking through them, and somebody else says, no, that's not, that's a work of the devil. Well, that would be blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, only if the first person is correct. I don't think that's really what this is talking about. I mean, that might be a small part of it. But really, this is talking about speaking against the Spirit himself, not misunderstanding the Spirit or having wrong beliefs about the nature of the Spirit or how the Spirit communicates, but actually denying the voice of the Holy Spirit. That still small voice that tells you, God's not going to like that. Don't do it. If you suppress that long enough, you're not going to hear it anymore. The Spirit works through your conscience and tells you right from wrong. Everybody at some level knows what's right and wrong. But if you consistently deny that and, and do what's wrong and keep telling yourself that it's right, you're going to cause yourself a problem. Uh, let me read you a couple other verses. Uh, Romans 1, 18 to 21. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. This is what happens when you deny, when you deny the Spirit. Uh, you can look around you, you can see creation. Scientists who look at, at DNA and the chemical processes that happen in the body, in the, the universe, and how complex and beautiful it all is. If you don't see God in that, 
then you are deliberately suppressing the Spirit speaking to you through creation. And that's going to damage your ability to think rationally. If you can study the universe and not come to a belief in God, something in you is broken, and you probably broke it yourself. Or it was unfortunately broken for you by people who brainwashed you and abused you. Ah, sorry, I got a couple of wasp nests around here. I don't know if that was a wasp or not, but it landed on my ear. Uh, all right, there's another verse I wanted to read to you. Uh, Titus 1.15 To the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are defiled and, un and unbelieving, nothing is pure, but even their mind and conscience are defiled. If you are listening to the Holy Spirit, if you are listening to God's voice in your through your conscience and through studying the Word, you will see God working in everything around you. You will see the beauty and the righteousness of God's creation. But if you are suppressing that, if you are denying the reality that is right in front of your eyes, eventually you're not even going to be able to see it. You know, you can deny Moses and still read the words of Yeshua and come to the same understanding, the same basic understanding of right and wrong that Moses teaches. And you can deny Yeshua that he was real and still the Spirit will speak to you through everything around you to tell you right from wrong, to point you in the right direction. Go look back at that guy who, through whom the entire universe was created. And if you're really paying attention to what he teaches, he'll lead you back to those other, the step-by-step -step processes of how to behave and how to love your neighbor. But if you deny that final voice, the Spirit speaking to you, the, the counselor that God gives to, to draw you back to him, to lead you back to the Messiah, if you deny that long enough, you will break your ability to hear from God. And the problem isn't so much that it's not forgivable, is that you will never ask for forgiveness. That is a really big deal. So when you hear the conscience, and when your conscience, if your conscience is telling you anything that is contrary to the Word of God, to the Scriptures, your conscience is already broken. And the only way you can fix it is by getting back into the Word, say, seeing what God told His people you need to go back to the basics, not just going to the principles that Yeshua taught. You need to believe those too, but you need to go back to Moses, back to Genesis 1, and learn the very basics of right and wrong. Realign your conscience, realign your heart, so that it is compatible with God, with His way of dealing with people, with His way of love, not what you think is love because you are probably wrong. God defines love. God defines right and wrong. And if your conscience is telling you something other than what God says, your conscience has already been twisted and the only way to fix it is through prayer and study in God's word. This is Jay Carper from American Torah. Read the word and be blessed.